Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7 Episode 11 Shattered has finally released on Disney+. Plus. After seeing the incredible beginning to the Siege of Mandalore in the last two episodes, we move into the action-packed and incredibly emotional second half of the arc. I can't believe we've finally arrived here but this is the second to last ever episode of The Clone Wars. Let me know down in the comments if you cried during this episode because that was really one of the most emotional things ever put on screen. Today's episode went back to the usual 23 minutes like the others in the series. I'm always extremely happy to be getting longer Clone Wars episodes but with the quality of this one I think 23 minutes is fine. So before we dive into every detail of this insane episode, remember to hit the subscribe button to be notified every time I release a recap and explainer of every single Clone Wars Season 7 episode. Once again, the episode began with the exact same traditional Lucasfilm logo and deep red Clone Wars logo as last time. Of course, there was also no opening crawl or newsreel. The episode begins very close to where we left off last time. We are brought down to the surface of Mandalore where clones from the 332nd Company have captured Maul's top super commandos, Gar Saxon and Rook Kast. Gar Saxon is extremely enraged at his capture and Maul's betrayal from last time. Following that, Ahsoka lands back on the surface of the planet greeting Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan is surprised that Ahsoka was actually capable of capturing Maul, but is still upset with the war and destruction that she has brought to Mandalore. Next, Ahsoka's conversation with Bo-Katan is interrupted by Commander Rex, who informs her that the Jedi Council is awaiting her presence in a hologram communication. Ahsoka curiously asks whether Anakin was able to be contacted after his rescue of the Chancellor, to which Rex replies that he is currently part of the meeting. As Ahsoka is escorted into the barracks, she is greeted by Mace Windu on the hologram who delivers his famous line, I sense a plot to destroy the Jedi. This is the exact same meeting as the one we see in Revenge of the Sith, but we now learn that Ahsoka was actually present only a few moments after what we see in the film. I absolutely love this as it now confirms that Ahsoka was actually present during Revenge of the Sith, but simply off screen. Ahsoka then informs the Jedi Council and Mace Windu that she has successfully captured Maul, and will escort Commander Rex as he transports Maul to Coruscant. After this, Ahsoka asks Mace Windu to speak with Anakin, but he informs her that he is on his way to inform the Chancellor that Grievous has been located by Kenobi on Utapau. Ahsoka realises that this means the war is near its end. Windu abruptly cuts her off, saying that that depends on the Chancellor. Ahsoka attempts to ask him what this means, but is rudely and arrogantly cut off because she is no longer a Jedi, and should not be concerned with these matters. Master Yoda offers to pass on a message from Ahsoka to Anakin, but Ahsoka refuses, stating that she will tell Anakin when she next sees him. This is incredibly heartbreaking to see because as we know, she will never get the chance to tell him this. Following this meeting, we go straight back to the clone barracks on Mandalore, where the captured Maul is being transported inside of a secure box. Escorting him to Ahsoka and Rex is of course Bo-Katan and her Night Owls, but also Ursa Wren, mother of Sabine Wren. It's absolutely amazing to finally see Ursa Wren in the Clone Wars animation style with her helmet off. After this, we get a really cool little detail about the ancient conflict between the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Bo-Katan notes that the box Maul is trapped in was designed specifically to capture force wielders from the Jedi Mandalorian Wars. Bo-Katan also states that her sister, Satine, outlawed these devices, but she of course happens to have the last one remaining. Ahsoka then shakes Bo-Katan's hand as a show of respect between a Jedi and a Mandalorian, something incredibly rare to see. This is also a huge teaser for the Mandalorian season 2, where Ahsoka and Bo-Katan are both rumoured to show up. Next, Ahsoka is escorted up to her ship by clones wearing red and white. These are the infamous Coruscant Guard clones controlled directly by Palpatine. As Ahsoka looks at Maul on the way to her ship, he closes his eyes and begins a deep force meditation. I'll get more into this very soon. Ahsoka then finally arrives on the Republic cruiser, with the extremely high value target being escorted by the Coruscant Guard clones. After this, Rex and Ahsoka move to the bridge of their ship and jump to hyperspace, in a shot that parallels Vader and Palpatine at the end of Revenge of the Sith, as they overlook the construction of the Death Star. Ahsoka looks worried, prompting Rex to ask her whether or not she is okay. Ahsoka makes it clear that she was always told that the Jedi were the peacekeepers of the galaxy, but ever since she joined the Order, all she has ever known is war and destruction. Rex similarly adds that without the Clone Wars, he and the clones would not exist at all. Ahsoka and Rex then salute each other in a very beautiful moment. Only moments later, Rex is interrupted by an officer who reports that a new briefing is ready for him. I don't even have to say what this briefing is about, you guys already know. It's just heartbreaking. 
He invites Ahsoka to view the briefing, but she refuses. Following this, we get one of the most incredible Clone Wars moments of all time. With Ahsoka and Maul both sensing the events of Palpatine's office duel with Mace Windu and Anakin. We hear every single one of the famous lines from that fight in Revenge of the Sith, making Ahsoka realise that something terrible has happened to Anakin. Oh, I can't put into words how I felt hearing this scene, it was absolutely amazing and heartbreaking at the same time. Following this, we get another tremendously incredible moment. Darth Sidious makes the transmission to Rex, demanding that he execute Order 66. Moments after he receives the order, Ahsoka rushes into his briefing room to tell him about the vision involving Anakin. Rex is absolutely shaking and struggling to hold himself back from killing Ahsoka on the spot. He drops his helmet to the floor, as the two clones wearing the helmets with Ahsoka's face on them point their weapons towards her. This is absolutely tragic. All three clones then point their blasters at Ahsoka with Rex demanding that he be the one to kill Ahsoka. At that point, I honestly thought that Rex was just doing it to get the other clones off her, but no, he genuinely wanted her dead. Before he takes the shot, he receives flashbacks about the death of Fives, who of course uncovered the truth about Order 66 before his death. Rex then fires his blaster at Ahsoka, but she is able to block it and knock him to the ground. The other clones on board the ship rush onto the bridge, each firing at Ahsoka, attempting to end her life. In an absolutely breathtaking moment, Ahsoka is surrounded by clones in each direction, all firing at her in quick succession. In a stunning display of skill, she manages to block each one of these blasters rapidly, before ducking away into the darkness through the ceiling. After Ahsoka's escape, Rex orders the Coruscant guard troopers to execute Maul in his prison cell. This tells us that Palpatine had a specific order to kill Maul, because he was obviously not a Jedi and not included in Order 66. The clones realise that Ahsoka is still on board the ship before Rex gives an explainer on exactly what Order 66 is. He explains that all Jedi leadership must be executed on sight, and any clones that fail to comply with this order will also be executed. Next, the clones move into Maul's cell, where he realises what is about to happen. In a shocking move, Ahsoka saves Maul's life only seconds before the clones are about to fire on him. Ahsoka then threatens Maul, asking if it was him who gave the order. Maul then confirms that he did not know about Sidious's plan for Order 66. Maul then again tries to team up with Ahsoka, but she refuses once again, telling him to create a distraction for her. I honestly didn't think they'd take Order 66 this far with Rex being fully controlled by the inhibitor chip. It's completely heartbreaking to see. As Ahsoka is sneaking around, she comes across Obi-Wan Kenobi's astromech R7A7 and two other droids. These droids surprisingly want to help Ahsoka discover why the clones have betrayed the Jedi. Ahsoka then instructs the droids to bring up the file on Fives, who of course uncovered all of the plan. They pull up his file where Ahsoka sees the inhibitor chip inside of each of the clones and a Kaminoan that covered up the plan earlier in the series. We also discover that Rex filed a report with Kamino after the death of Fives that posed the question of whether or not the chips inside of each of the clones' heads had a greater purpose. He was of course right about this but the Jedi were blind to it. The next scene is absolutely great with Maul simply walking through a horde of clones firing their blasters at him, shredding through each of them and blocking their blasters with metal plates. He actually uses some powers from Jedi Fallen Order in this scene, so let me know which ones you spotted. As one of the clones attempts to escape through a blast door, Maul pulls him with the force until he is brutally crushed by the door. I absolutely love Maul for this. Next, the droids working with Ahsoka trap Rex inside of a central chamber, allowing her to confront him through a hologram. She tells Rex that she knows about the chip in his brain, and then in a stunning reveal, it turns out that she is standing right behind him. The droid shocks Rex unconscious, allowing Ahsoka to take him to the medical bay. The droids run a scan on Rex, hoping to reveal the location of the chip. Shockingly, on the first scan, the chip is not found. As this is going on, the other clones are attempting to break into the medical bay creating an intense feeling of suspense. Ahsoka then places her hands on Rex's head, attempting to find the chip through the force. Ahsoka actually uses the same line as Churro Imwe from Rogue One, where he says, I am one with the force, the force is with me. This line now symbolises people who strongly believe in the force but are not Jedi. As the droids continue scanning for Rex's chip, the clones break open the door, leading to a showdown between them and Ahsoka. Rex reveals to Ahsoka that every single clone contains one of these chips and have been ordered to destroy the Jedi Knights. The episode then ends on a huge cliffhanger again, with two lightsabers burning through the door. 
I initially thought this might have been Maul, but his lightsabers were lost on the roof of the Mandalorian Royal Palace last episode. And that is where the episode ends in another amazing setup for next week's episode. Well, what a fantastic episode again. I honestly can't wait to see what they have in store for us next week. As you know, the next episode will be airing on May the 4th, not next Friday, so stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching, remember to hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as I release a recap video every single time a Clone Wars episode drops. Thanks so much for watching, cheers guys.